So we are back home and we're gonna try something new. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is a vlog from home and we still have so much footage to show you guys from Texas and Arizona and New Mexico. I just haven't been able to get all that footage put together, but we got plenty of footage on a hard drive, so we'll get it to you. I'm just a little bit behind on my work. But anyway, we're back home and we got something new. We got a new smoker grill. I take the cover of it off to show you, but it might rain and frankly, cover is kind of a pain in the neck to put back on so you'll see it tomorrow and I made a few things on it already like I made steaks chicken ribs hamburgers bratwurst but I want to try something else I'm wanting to do brisket because we have had some amazing brisket in Texas like I don't know DB's barbecue truck out of Chilingo Tequas Tequas DB's barbecue out of Chilingo Texas Tommy smokes barbecue around Bolverde, Texas. And strangely enough, Berkshire Brothers brisket straight out of the deli. Super good. And then we've also had some bad brisket. I'm not gonna tell you those places. You'll have to find them out for yourselves. I don't wanna talk bad about anybody in this video. But I would want to try brisket. However, brisket is super expensive. Like they have a cut of brisket at our local IGA. It's $50. $50. And I'm not ready yet. I've mastered chicken and ribs and hamburgers and a little bit of steak, but I'm not ready to go for a $50 cut of meat. By the way, there's a lot of stuff on top of my fridge. But one of my dear friends, Elise, told me that she uses what they call a poor man's brisket, which is done with a chuck roast. And they smoke a chuck roast. A chuck roast! And I just so happen to have one that I got from my local IGA. What we have here is a 2.39 pound chuck roast. It's about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter thick. And look at all that marbling. Look at all that glorious fat. Glorious fat. <laughs> So I'm going to do my best to season it up just like I would a brisket. I'm going to set it in the fridge overnight in my seasonings. And then tomorrow, Chris's ice maker is going, drives me crazy. Tomorrow, we are going to smoke and cook up a brisket in our Weber pellet smoker. In our Weber pellet smoker. Web it, tell it, Weber, Weber pellet smoker. But tonight I'm gonna put the, but tonight I'm gonna put the, between Chris yelling in the background and the ice maker going, it's hard to do this vlog. By the way, my voice is shot because I played a show this weekend and I had band practice last night and so I kind of sound like Barry White going through puberty. Sorry. Anyway, we're gonna put it in our Weber pellet smoker tomorrow to cook up all day long. But tonight I've got to put on the seasonings and it looks a little something like this. Now of all the people that I've researched that have done their meats, whether it's brisket or chuck roast or whatever, they put on a bunch of seasonings to make what's called a bark which is where it all smokes up together and I'm just gonna use some seasonings I got around the house like a Lowry seasoning a chili lime blend that we can get from Trader Joe's which is a local store and then the magical stuff this is in a different jar but this is Mitchell Street seasoning that we get from Penzi's we love this stuff so I'm gonna start with my Lowry's get what they call a good base seasoning on there I don't know what that means other than like the first layer and I'm gonna get it all I got some of those really cool black gloves like all the barbecue pit masters have coming in the mail, but I don't have them here, so I'm gonna use my hands. It's okay. I washed them. I'll wash them again. Both sides. Make sure you get it on that glorious fat. And also, I wanna make sure and get all the sides seasoned up as well, coated with that, because you want all of that glorious seasoning on that glorious fat. And meat. Yeah, it's good enough for the first one. And now, well, now I gotta wash my hands. All right, and now it is time for the chili lime blend. By the way, I realized that I was touching my uh, Lowry or my Mitchell seasoning with my hand that I was touching with that, so then I had to wash that bottle off. So get gloves, or else this is gonna take longer. Chili lime seasoning right over the top. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna go through this whole thing again. I'll wash this bottle off too. All over there, just like that. Generous, as they say. Be generous, this is a big cut of meat. That's gonna smoke a long time, you want a lot of those flavors in, I guess. I don't know, this is what I'm learning myself. But watching some really cool people online, uh, there's a lot of cool guys that have a lot of really cool videos. The pit masters, I guess, that know how to do this stuff. One of them, Malcolm Reed, by the way, if you're watching this, you're awesome. And I gotta go clean my hands again and that bottle. And then the third seasoning is the Mitchell Street. <laughs> I put it in a bowl so I don't have to wash the bottle. So now I just put that over there again, generously all over all the fat, all the meat. Get the top coat all on there. 
Okay, well, I can save some for the bomb. Kind of pat that in. Push her over. Do it again on the bottom side. Now, some people, after they get done, they wrap it up in butcher's twine. I don't have any butcher's twine, so we're just going to cook it just like it is. Get it all down in there. And as Malcolm Reed would say, it's going to form a good bark. I hope so. All right, so I'm going to lay this on the side over there. That way, I can kind of roll a bit in there. Make sure you get that end cap seasoned up. Top part on the sides there, I'll season that. And that's what we're left with. We are left with a giant piece. I mean, there's some extra seasoning that I don't want to waste, so I'm going to put it on there. And what this is going to do is it's going to set up on the meat overnight, get all the flavors melded together, going to kind of soak into that meat. And then tomorrow, we're going to smoke it. Now I got to go wash my hands in that bowl. All right, y'all, last step is I wrapped it up in the foil. I'm gonna put it in the meat drawer. I'm gonna let it sit overnight, and then I'll see you in the morning. I'm gonna put this on the smoker. All right, here we are the next day. I still have issues, so I sound really weird, but trust me, it's me. Uh, I've let this meat sit in that foil with all those seasonings overnight. I meant to get up at seven o'clock and put it on the grill, uh, but <clears throat> have a really, really, really sore throat. So instead I went to the doctor, come to find out I got an ear infection. Don't worry, I won't give nobody the cooties or nothing like that, you guys are safe. Uh, so it's a little afternoon, which means I'm probably gonna be cooking into the evening because I wanna slow cook on this. And this is what this meat looks like after sitting in the fridge for about 16 hours. There we go, check that out. That is gonna be one flavorful piece of meat that's gonna make a really good bark. And speaking of bark, everybody does it different. My friend Elise says that she wraps hers in foil and she smokes it for nine hours in the foil. I've seen other guys that will smoke it for a while outside of foil and then put it into foil. I know that I want a really good bark on this. I know I want what they call that smoke ring, which is that pink ring around the meat. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my Weber grill here set on 225. And as you can see, it's come up to temperature. So open up the grill. I'm just gonna take this piece of meat and I'm gonna slap it right there. I don't have gloves and I forgot to bring tongs, but I know I wanna slide this back in the back because the thermometer it's telling me what the heat is inside. Is it 225 right there? So it's gonna regulate it from that thermometer. So I'm gonna put this piece of meat back there right by the thermometer. Some pit masters that I've watched say that you want it to come up to room temperature. Other pit masters that I've seen said that you wanna throw the meat on cold. If you put it on there cold, you're gonna get a better smoke ring. I don't know, this is all brand new to me. All I know is I've got a massive chuck roast that's 2.29 pounds. I guess that's not too massive, but it'd be good enough for me to have for lunch or late dinner I guess uh, on the grill and the really 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 cool thing about this is my phone has an app that Weber makes that could tell me what the temperature of my meat is what the temperature of my uh, my grill is it'll tell me any issues if I'm running low on fuel it'll tell me right on my phone so if I skip out for a little bit and go somewhere else it'll still contact me and say hey I'm low on wood pellets or hey you reach temperature or if there's something wrong it'll let me know so I'm gonna go get me some lunch because there's no way in heck that this is gonna be ready in time and then we are come back and we will check our meat in about three hours all right so we've had our meat on the smoker now for about three and a half hours about a half hour longer than I wanted to I'll be honest I forgot about it and I got working on some videos but I think we're gonna be okay uh, the internal temperature because I put a probe in the meat it shows it at I don't know if you can see that or not because it's so sunny but it says 157 so it's slowly rising in temperature when I put that meat probe in an hour and a half ago it was at about 144 so it's slowly raising in temperature up on the inside of that meat my biggest concern is the outside I want to see that bark for the from the smoke so let's see what that looks like now all right it's definitely smoky in there Boy, that is a gorgeous piece of meat. Let me slide that back this way a little bit so we can take a look at it. Yeah, that bark is setting up on top of that meat. The fat's starting to render out of it, but I don't want to lose any more of that fat because I want to keep that meat juicy on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off and put it on a piece of foil and I'm gonna wrap it up. Give me a second, because I need both hands for this. All right, so I've got it wrapped up good and tight with some aluminum foil. 
I'm just gonna take it, transfer it back to the smoker, right in the back where I know it's exactly 225 degrees. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna gently on the top, take my probe and put it down into the meat. Close my lid. And now we wait, because now I need that internal temperature to go all the way up to 205 degrees, and then it should be ready to go. I'll know whenever I can take that probe and stick it into the meat and it just goes through like butter. Right now it's not there. Now's when you wrap it in the foil and everything's gonna slowly render down and it's gonna make that meat nice and juicy. It's gonna break down all of the collagen within that meat and it's gonna render that fat down and that's how you get that really good piece of meat. At least that's what I've seen from the experts and my friend Elise. We'll see you here in a few hours. I'll let you know. All right, so we've gone another two hours and my probe just went off saying that it reached the 205 on the internal temperature I was looking for. But now what I'm looking for is to make sure that that meat is tender, tender, tender inside. And so here's the moment of truth. All right, so I'm gonna grab the spatula and kind of pull this back to me. Let's see what we got here. Pull the probe out just for a second. It's definitely smoky. And when you got laryngitis, this is really not the thing to do. So risk I'm willing to take. Look at all those juices. That makes me happy. So now I want to take this and put it in there. It's pretty. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tender. It's a little tough here on the tip. In some places, other places, the, pl the probe goes right through. But y'all, I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to call that done enough. Okay, so we know the meat's done. I'm gonna pull it off the grill, out of the foil. I'll put it in a bigger pan. It'll be a lot easier to transport that way. It's hot. <laughs> now this foil shouldn't be as hot. I'm gonna try to save those juices. I'll pour them right oh, over them. Your smoker is smoking up my... Uh oh Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh, you've got it everywhere. I That's bet you'll okay. clean that up later, huh? No, but I got two dogs that will. <laughs> All right, so now the next step is for me to cut into this meat and, well. And bonk your head on the it. flowers. I'm good at that. <laughs> you better watch him or he's going to grab your pan. <laughs> Don't burn his face if he does. <laughs> Obi, what are you doing? All right, so first off, pardon the mess. We haven't been home that long, so I haven't had a chance to really get the back deck ready, but that's not going to stop me from smoking meat back here. Uh, I'm saving the juices in the big pan because we'll transfer it back over. There's different ways you can do this. You can take gloves and you can shred it up, take forks and shred it up. It's a smoked chuck roast. A lot of people call this poor man's brisket because this costs like $14.20 where a full brisket will cost me about $50. My friend Elise swears by it. A lot of people love it. Uh, it won't be true brisket, but it's still a good cut of meat. So I'm going to start off by cutting with the grain, or against the grain rather. There's a burnt end. Is that? Yep, yep, yep. So I'm gonna just take a slice. You see how it flops like that? That means it is good and tender. It's got a really, really, really good smoke ring, about a quarter inch smoke ring. That's good. But the truth is in the flavor. I'll be honest, it's still not as good as a good Texas brisket made by Tommy Smoke or DB's Barbecue or Albertsons. That is still really good. So instead of slicing it up like brisket, I think I'm gonna go ahead and shred it up with a couple forks, put it back in the juices. If I wanna keep it really juicy, I could add a little bit of beef broth with it in there to keep that juice going, keep it moist. Um, but I really don't think it's gonna last long enough for that to happen because uh, between the three of us, Okay, well, the five of us with the two boys, we're probably going to devour this, but here's a burnt end, as they call it. So it's got even more bark all the way around it. Maybe if I was to give a little bit to my camera lady. There you go. Tell me what you think. She's giving me a thumbs up. I'm gonna shred this up, and they'll have their choice if they wanna put it over rice or taters or just take it as is, maybe put it in a sandwich. That was a good test for a big cut of beef on the smoker. Um, 
So you're glad you tried it out with the I'm Chuck glad I tried Rose it out with the Chuck you Rose. Tried <clears throat> an expensive brisket. Now, Lee said that she wrapped hers in foil and she cooked it for like nine hours. She just put it in the foil with her seasonings, put it on the smoker at 225 for nine hours. I wanted a really thick smoke ring, so I did a first about three hours with it, three and a half hours. I on, bet hers is probably a little bit more tender. I bet it is because it cooked longer in the foil as it came up to temperature, it rendered down better. Mm -hmm. um, but I still wanted that bark. You know, I wanted that good smoke ring around, which that hickory smoke that I got in there is really good. I bought a couple other uh, bags to try that has uh, some hickory and cherry and maple wood in it too. So that should give different flavors, but it's really peppery uh, with the spices I put on it. I think mainly that was because the big portions that I rubbed, that I put on there for a rub was that Mitchell Street, which is a really strong, intense flavor anyway. So there's definitely a little bit of heat to it. Not an uncomfortable amount, but it's definitely got heat. Um, definitely got enough salt on it, um, but I think shredded up, I think this would be even better especially after it in its own juices for a little bit longer. Oh yeah, the other thing I was supposed to do that I couldn't wait on, you're supposed to let this rest for about 30 minutes before you eat it, but I've been watching this piece of meat all day. I couldn't wait any longer. And it's your birthday. And it's my birthday, and I can eat meat right out of the grill <laughs> if I want to. So, um, so we're going to keep working on this one before it makes it to the vlog, but we're yeah. still going to do the vlog and let everybody see it. Yeah, and I will let the rest of this rest for about another... 10 or 15 minutes or so and then I'm going to tear into it for dinner. If anybody else has tips for theirs, let us know. Show me your tips. I want to know uh, whether it's a tri-tip or if it's brisket or what kind of meat that you guys put in your smoker, whether it's a pellet smoker or if it's a charcoal smoker, however you do it. Um, we've got the Weber pellet smoker, so if you've got something similar to that, you can let us know your recipes. We'll try them out. If we dig them, we're definitely going to give you guys a shout out, maybe a, a present. I don't know. I got plenty of guitar picks to give away. Maybe a couple CDs. I don't know. Whatever y'all want. Um, but this is what we're trying right now. It's the summer, so for the summer series, we're gonna do some smoking, man. And uh, I want to be a pit master by the end of the summer. That's right. That's right. Malcolm Reed, I'm coming for your job, buddy. <laughs> if y'all like what you're seeing here, make sure you give us a thumbs up down below. If you have not become a member of the Croc Posse, be sure and click the little subscribe button down below and become a blessed, loved member, beloved member of the Croc Posse. And also, y'all, whatever you do, laugh often. Eat good food. It's Be Clive. Bye, y'all. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the page.